I started at, at Armco Steel when I was 19 years old. So I spent 30 years working at, in a steel mill. In 2006, the, we were locked out. It was, a, it was a contract lockout. And at that time, I, I had my 30 years and, I, and they offered us a bu basic buyout for insurance. So I took the buyout, but I was 49 years old and I didn't have any idea what I was going to. I needed a second career. Well, I started doing remodeling work, and it's funny because the very first job I had was with, uh, for Jackie McGowan and Pat McGowan at their house. And the relationship started there with MB, basically through Pat and Jackie. Because you gotta understand, I came from a union, blue collar background where uh, it was all about the dollar. It was all about how much money you made. Um, and, and nobody was happy, nobody was happy, everybody complained. To go from that work background to getting to know the McGowans and doing remodeling work around here, just odd jobs and, and fixing up stuff and uh, meeting the people and coming into this place, it was kind of like a culture shock for me. Uh, when, when I first came here and started doing work, uh, Everybody, everybody was happy. Nobody complained in a workforce. And it was funny because as I worked along with people and got to know people here and made friends with people here, I actually started asking them, I would say, this ain't real, right? This is not real. And they would say, and they'd use the term, you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. I said, exactly. And I had people tell me, you know, I've been here five years, seven years, and we're still waiting for that other shoe to drop. I, I'm pretty sure it was 2017, and I was, I was at my desk in my area, and Dave and Phil come to me and start talking to me about their plan for the building. They, they wanted to remodel all the meeting rooms and, have, and meet, make each meeting room um, unique to the Dayton area. And so we started this talking, and we started doing research, and then all, <laughs> all of, they wanted to make the boardroom uh, a call it a Wright, the Wright Brothers room. They wanted the Wright Brothers uh, theme for the boardroom. We want you to build a wing to hang over the boardroom table. And <laughs> I, just, I just sat there in silence for a minute and I thought, Oh, oh, you, you guys are really serious about this. I thought you guys, I thought you were just pulling my leg. So they left me alone. And I started going on the internet and, and pulling up uh, information about people that had actually built replica wings. Uh, I went to the Springboro Airport, they had the Wright B Flyer down there, and they actually have a little museum there. And it was funny because I went down there by myself and walked in and they weren't open, but the door was open. I walked in, there was three, three guys back there that did work on the, on this, uh, on the flyer down there. And I was explaining to him what, what I was doing. And I said, I'm, I'm gonna throw this out there. This is probably gonna sound crazy to you, but do you have like a, a strut off of the flyer, an old one? He said, yeah, yeah, we got probably 20 of them that we'll never use again. And I said, could I borrow one? And he said, sure. He, I explained to him what I was doing. Yeah, and he was so excited. So he gave me this strut and I brought it back to the office. After I showed Phil the strut, uh, I had to figure out, and he was like so excited. I built one and he was so excited. He said, that's exactly what we're looking for. And I thought, okay, now I gotta take this one strut that is five feet wide and it's like an inch thick, just one shaped strut. And I have to tie all these together. And I think the whole wing is like 20 feet. 22 feet long, so I tied them all together. And to make a long story short, uh, uh, yeah, I wind up doing it, and I couldn't believe it. One of the other funny things about the wing was, after I got it built, because of the design of the hallway and the opening to the boardroom, it hit me all of a sudden, and I thought, I don't know if I can get it in there. I don't know if I can turn it, bend it, and get it in there. So I took a 22-foot board and we kind of finagled and, and we, anyway, we got it in. We suspended it with airline cables, 
I had probably had six people that was, we all hung it with airline cables, put the lights up. And, and it, for anybody that's ever been in the boardroom uh, after we finished it, I, it just, I'm so proud of it. I mean, it's like, for me, that was the coolest thing I've ever done. I mean, that's probably the coolest thing I've ever built. And then when Phil had my name put on it, I cried. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I think I think the there's so many things that I want to be remembered at uh, Going Brave Bender, and and I, I would kind of like to hope that I already am. Um, it's not for the stuff I built. It's not for uh, you know if you, people walk around the building and, and I've got so many special places here and, and stuff that I've made or stuff that I've done or. It's, that's that's cool. Don't get me wrong. That's cool for me, and it's great for me to have it here because I feel like I I'm a piece of this building. But like that's not important. The important thing for me is people remember me uh, and my personality. I think I had I had I kind of probably had a unique personality in the inside the walls of my going brave Bender because of my past and where I came from. Uh, I want people to remember me as being somebody that they trusted, uh, somebody that they could talk to at any time. And uh, I, I, I think I feel like I brought the word love into, into the walls of my going brave bender because I, I told so many people I love them. And, and, and at first people would look at you funny and uh, you know, you, you gotta be able to tell people you love them. And, um, that, that means a lot to me, and I want people to love me back.